Hello everyone, this is Tithi ma'am here and as you all know my area of expertise is in genetics. So today here I am going to uh, guide you and I am going to tell you 5 top facts that will always uh, you will need for your genetics preparation. Now please remember and understand that I am not talking about only CSIR exam. I am talking about GATE, ICMR, uh, ICMR, JRF, DBT, JRF or any other competitive exam that you are talking about or any uh, interview also if you are going for a position in genetics in the field of genetics. So these are some of the basic topics, some of the basic facts that you should be well aware of and if you are aware of it then you can call yourself a genetics expert as well. So let's get started. So the very first, uh, so I have come here with five facts like that. So the very first one will be Mendelian genetics. See, as we all know, Mendel is known as the father of genetics, okay? So basically, you can talk about modern genetics, but then you have to have an idea about the classical genetics. And whenever we talk about classical genetics, it is Mendelian genetics that comes in the picture. So you should be well aware with Mendelian genetics. So what all things that you need to be aware with? So you have to know the, uh, you have to have a well understanding of the laws. So all the three laws of Mendel, okay. So uh, the law of uh, dominance and recessiveness, the law of segregation, as well as the law of independent assortment. Now, when I'm saying law, please remember that I'm not only talking about the sentence of it, okay. I'm not asking you to mug it up, okay. Just cram the sentence of the laws. No, you have to read between the sentence and you have to understand what it is actually saying what it actually means, what is its actual significance, okay? So that is one thing. Another thing is whenever we use Mendelian genetics, in that we will be, uh, we, we will be using the laws of probability to predict the genotype or phenotype in the future generation. Okay, so especially in the competitive exams where questions related to that are often asked. So your understanding of these probabilities, the laws of probabilities and how we can implicate it in genetics is very, very important. Okay, so the addition rule, where to apply the addition rule, where to apply the multiplication rule. Okay, if the events are happening independently. And you have to find out the the probability that combination of events, independent events are happening together. Which law to use? Or what is the binomial expression of probability? Okay. So all these things you should be well aware of. There should be no confusion between the terms or the formulas that we use. As that comes as, brings us to the numericals. Okay. So numericals related to Mendelian genetics, the, the ratios that is obtained. Okay. And one more thing is when you are, we are doing Mendelian genetics, so you're making monohybrid cross or dihybrid cross. Always remember that the, the, the phenotype Typic ratio, like in a monohybrid cross in the F1 generation, we get a phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 1. So it's a ratio, it's not an absolute number. Okay, so these are very basic things, and you should be well aware of that. And definitely, you should be aware of, of the basic terms. Okay, what is genotype? What is phenotype? What is F1? Okay, what is a Punnett square? What is a test square? What is a reciprocal square? So this basic thing should be very clear to you. <clears throat> Number two will be the extensions of Mendelian principle. So once you have understood Mendelian principle, Mendelian genetics, then you also have to understand the extensions, the deviations from Mendelian principles. Okay, so here basically it will comprise of all small, small uh, concepts which uh, Mendel never uh, came across or Mendel uh, never explained from its finding. Okay, but they are also there in the nature. So it might be uh, the co-dominance and incomplete dominance kind of relationship that can exist between the alleles of a gene. So alleles of a gene are not only dominant and recessive, they can be co-dominant or they can be incomplete dominant also, the understanding of that. Then there might be gene interaction where not one gene is not producing one phenotype only. 
two genes are interacting with each other they are influencing each other's expression one is masking another so epistasis the different kind of epistasis okay and how that is modifying the dihybrid ratio in mendelian genetics so that is something that you should know then you should understand the concept of penetrance and expressivity then another very important thing is sex linked sex limited and sex influenced trait so it often people get students get very very confused and they think that they all are related to the genes or the characters that are coded by the genes present on the sex chromosomes well that is absolutely wrong sex linked is the only trait which is coded uh, which is, which is uh, which is coded by the genes that are present on the x chromosome but sex limited or sex influenced traits they are autosomal traits okay so they are not present on the sex chromosome the genes are not present on the sex chromosome but they are present on the autosomes okay but what is it their expression is different okay the individual may have it but their expression whether it will be expressed or not whether it will be expressed as a dominant allele or not that will depend on the gender of the individual that is what is sex limited and sex influenced and then one more thing which is coming up as a popular question okay that is regarding the complementation test okay where we try to find out whether the mutations are happening in the same gene or different gene whether the mutations are allelic or non allelic okay so the basic concept like how the complementation test is done what is the inference that you take out from the uh, from the complementation test okay so that is something that you should no and you should remember and uh, when you see the questions that csir have asked in the recent times especially regarding the complementation test so you will see the question does not mention complementation test at all okay it just says that you have multiple mutations you are crossing them so whether the wild type phenotype is formed or mutant type phenotype is formed that is what is mentioned okay so you have to remember and recall that this is the basic of complementation test that we try we we cross two mutants and then try to see whether the wild type phenotype is formed or the mutant phenotype is formed so if the wild type phenotype mutant cross mutant produces wild type then we call it as complementation mutant cross mutant produces mutant phenotype only that we call it as no complementation okay so these are some of the concepts that you should be well versed with number 3 will be gene mapping now gene mapping is very important especially for the competitive exams again okay so there you have to understand the concept of linkage and crossing over now this concept of linkage and crossing over will be helpful for you even when you are going for research in the field of genetics okay so you have to understand that the genes which are present together on the chromosome they have a tendency to be linked and get inherited to the next generation together and how can this linked genes be separated only when there is crossing over between them okay so linkage and crossing over they are two opposite phenomena okay and then what is the correlation between the recombination frequency and gene distance so more is the distance between the genes more is the physical area available between them so higher will be the chance of recombination so higher recombination means higher gene distance okay so in fact in terms of gene mapping what do we say we find out the recombination frequency percentage and that is what is called as one map unit or one centimorgan then when we are talking about gene mapping so this recombination frequency uh, and all we can use for the eukaryotic diploid organism okay but what about the fungi who are eukaryotic but haploid organism so in them gene mapping can be done with the help of tetrad analysis where uh, there are again there are two different types of tetrad analysis ordered tetrad analysis unordered tetrad analysis so where we use ordered where we use unordered okay so what is the uh, how do we understand which one has to be used okay so ordered uh, tetrad analysis we do when we have to find out the distance between the centromere and a gene but when we are talking about finding out the distance between two different genes then we have to do the unordered tetrad analysis okay then definitely you should be well versed with what is the formula that we use 
for ordered as well as unordered tetrad analysis then only you will be able to do the numericals then only you will be able to do the calculations here okay and definitely when we are talking about gene mapping so you should be well versed with the formulas of recombination frequency then um, inherit um, interference uh, coefficient of coincidence okay how to calculate them okay and if you uh, and if you would understood the, uh, the the concept of probability here okay then this all these formulas okay all these concepts will also be easy for you you will be able to do the formulas you will be able to remember the formulas easily okay you don't have to mug up the things because that also again is probability based then mapping with molecular markers now this is something that is double important i will say because there can be questions linked with the molecular markers in unit 13 as well okay so how do we use the molecular markers what are co-dominant markers what are dominant markers okay how do you we interpret it in the in, in the gel or in the band pattern okay so those things you should know and well verse with then there is microbial gene mapping now nowadays especially in csir exam questions are often coming from microbial gene mapping and questions are coming in part b as well as part c okay so you should know what is transformation transduction and conjugation and then you should know how do we map the genes by using co-transformation frequency co-transduction frequency as well as interrupted conjugation okay and one important thing is that in interrupted conjugation you have to remember that the unit of gene distance is not in terms of uh, base pairs or kilo base pairs or even recombination frequency or centimorgan it is in terms of minute here okay so when we do the interrupted conjugation the distance between the genes that we get we get it as a function of time okay so the unit that of gene distance in interrupted conjugation is minutes okay <coughs> now moving on so the fourth com uh, fact that you should know is pedigree analysis okay now pedigree analysis is very very important for human genetics it's a very important part of uh, human genetics so you should be well aware of pedigree analysis so in pedigree analysis what all things you need to know you need to understand the unique features of each inheritance pattern so that anybody gives you any um, uh, pedigree chart okay you should be able to analyze it and find out the most probable pattern of inheritance like whether the trait is autosomal dominant or recessive dominant or x-linked or mitochondrial so all these things you can find out by analyzing the chart you should know how to do that so you should know what are the unique features of each of the inheritance pattern then uh, uh, you should know how to calculate the probabilities also so once you have identified once you have studied the chart and you have identified the mode of inheritance then you should also be able to calculate what is the chance of that particular trait to be seen in a particular generation okay and uh, you should know the concept of lord score as well okay now so far whatever questions have been asked in the csir exam and also in other competitive exams nowhere i have seen that uh, anybody has asked you to calculate the lot score okay but definitely questions regarding the interpretation of lot score has been asked okay so you should know that what basically is lot score what is the significant value for lot score so lot score we calculate for uh, finding the uh, probability that a particular gene is linked or it is getting in uh, independently assorted okay so the important value here is 3 so if lot score is 3 that interprets linkage okay lot score less than 3 okay or minus 2 actually that interprets independent assortment okay so this interpretation of lot score that you should know okay and lot score is logarithm okay it's a log value so uh, that should also be very very clear to you the next uh, important thing will be
mutations okay now in terms of mutation so what is mutation mutation is any change that is happening in the dna okay so you should know what are the different types of mutation like what are the gene mutations what is point mutation uh, what is uh, the chromosomal mutations like inversion deletion translocation okay then you should know what is the consequence of the chromosomal mutations okay and uh, there might be questions where they give you the nucleotide sequence okay and you have to identify what mutation has happened okay sometimes those questions are also joined with the, uh, the 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 analytical techniques okay and then they give you a gel uh, 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 the sanger sequencing gel okay so from there first you have to find out the sequence and then you have to find out what mutation has happened okay so those kind of question can be there and also the effect of mutagens okay so you should know what are the different mutagens there what are the different categories how they work and what kind of mutation do they uh, produce okay because mutation mutagens and their actions will be useful for finding the uh, mutation reversal studies okay so in questions like that you should be able to know and also in the research area okay so that is how we can find out does it how the researchers find out that how like what kind of mutation is created by a particular mutagen by doing the reversal with the help of some known mutagen okay so this basic concepts about mutagen what kind of mutation are they incorporating how they are incorporating should be very clear to you so let's all uh, take one more look here so these are the top five facts that you will always be needed in your genetics preparation so it will be mendelian genetics the entire idea of mendelian genetics the deviation of mendelian principles then gene mapping pedigree analysis and mutations so thank you everyone for watching the video i'm sure this will help you for your preparation in genetics thank you everybody bye bye have a great day